Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name's Lizzie and I'm here today to tell you about the most recent sewing project that I finished. This is one that featured in my um, Fabric Haul and Sewing Plans video, so I'll pop a, pop a link in one of the corners in case you haven't seen it yet. The thing that I've made is a dress and I am wearing it now, but I'll hold you in just a little bit of suspense for a minute whilst I tell you about the fabric and the pattern before I show you the full dress in action. Um, so this is the fabric. I bought it from the Village Haberdashery from their online website, but they are based in West Hampstead if you wanted to go to their shop. Um, the fabric is by a designer called Pippa Shaw. It's from her Altitude collection and the name of it is Alpine something something. I can't remember the exact name, but I'll put a blog post in the description box below with all the links and all the fabric details and stuff in it. And um, this is what it looks like. It's This is the kind of colour that I would call blue and my mum would argue with me and call it green and um, so I'm not quite sure how to describe the colour but it's a lovely bright summery colour with little sort of creamy yellow outlines of kind of mountains on it. It's really unusual but really pretty and I really like it. Um, the pattern that I used is from the Love at First Stitch book which is by Tilly from Tilly and the Buttons. You've seen this in umpteen of my videos by now because I am working through it pattern by pattern and I'm loving it because it's just really clear, really basic, step by step, and each pattern kind of teaches you a few more techniques in comparison to the pattern before, so I've really been able to expand some of my, some of my basic skills from using this book. So this is what the Megan dress looks like. This is Tilly wearing her lovely Megan dress. I think it's a really classic style. I was really excited to make it. And yeah, I'm, oh, focus went a bit crazy there. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. So. so without further ado, I will show you my Megan dress. So as you can see, it's got kind of a relatively high um, round neckline with these very sweet little slightly ruffled puffy sleeves. And then it's got some dark tucks here. It sort of hugs the waist a little bit and then goes out or across the hips. This is the kind of hack that I've added to my Megan dress. Now, I do think that the Megan dress is a lovely kind of classic shape on its own. So I didn't intend to hack it, particularly not on my first attempt. But um, I have a very kind of boyish figure, so I have broad shoulders and very narrow hips. So these little, ever so slightly puffy sleeves aren't my best friend because they kind of when I first made the dress and got it to a point where I could try it on, the the sleeves just made me look quite top heavy because there wasn't, I don't have hips to then balance out these kind of sleeves. So I was thinking, right, what can I do to balance my figure out and not make me feel like, you know, a 14 year old rugby player? <laughs> and I thought adding a ruffle would be a really good way to balance out the shape of these um, sleeves and I'm so pleased with the effect so I'll just try and show you again in a little bit more detail um, but yeah it just means that the dress kicks out at the bottom and it's only it's only little it's not like a huge big puffy ruffle but it does just add, do enough to, to balance it out so I did make quite a few fit adjustments with this one and there was one adjustment that I knew before I even started that I was going to have to make um, and I could tell just by looking from the picture of the pattern that the waist is quite high on this one or it's, it's quite short in the body, this pattern. I am very, very long in the body. The distance between my bust and my waist is miles and miles, it's, it's actually quite ridiculous. So I knew immediately I was going to have to add on to the bottom of the bodice so that the waist would actually hit my waist and not be halfway up my ribcage. So I actually ended up adding eight centimetres to the bodice, which sounds like loads, but yeah, it means that I really did drop, I dropped the length of the bodice by quite a lot. That, of course, then meant that the skirt was further down, so it ended up quite long. I could have, I could have worked around that in advance if I'd have thought of it, but I didn't think about that at the time. So it ended up quite a bit too long. And I actually ended up cutting off 18 and a half centimetres, which sounds like loads. But I really, I didn't want it to be too long because I wanted it to be kind of playful and summery. And I wanted to feel comfortable to wear it with flats as well as with like a heeled sandal or whatever. But that 18 and a half centimetres of fabric that I literally chopped off the bottom of the dress actually got completely reused and recycled. Because that's what the fabric that I used to make my ruffle. 
Because it was 18 and a half centimetres deep, I was able to just cut it all in half again. Cut the, they were obviously a whole circle because it was the dress, so I cut the loops open, sewed them together into one big long strip. So that strip was then twice the length that it needed to be to go around the dress, which was perfect because I like to make my ruffles with double the amount of fabric to get the nice ruffly effect. So yeah, this fabric that I've turned into the ruffle is, yeah, it, it's what I cut off the bottom of the dress. So I cut two lots of this off the bottom of the dress and then turned them into my nice ruffle. I love the ruffle. I think it's such a nice kind of playful, Spanishy feel. And yeah, I think it's great for summer. I needed to adjust the darts and unfortunately I wasn't able to and I'll explain why. So basically the the book, Tilly and the Buttons Love at First Stitch book, tells you that you should sew the bust darts, sew the skirt darts, and then sew the bodice to the skirt. So that's exactly what I did. But my cutting and marking of the pattern onto the fabric obviously wasn't quite as accurate as it could have been, because my darts, they match up pretty much on the front, but they didn't match up on the back. We're not talking a huge mismatch, literally like a centimetre or so, off, but it did mean that when I needed to take fabric out of the back, because it was too big for me at the back, I kind of couldn't because the darts were misaligned. So if I make the dress again, I think I'll actually sew the, I think I'll sew the bodice to the skirt before I sew the darts, so that then I can make sure I can take it all in and fit it however I need to, regardless of any inaccuracies with darts aligning and so on because I can just make sure I'll align them myself because it'll all be sewn together already. So that was the only kind of issue I had, yeah that was the main issue that I had that I kind of had to work out how to solve. I didn't want to unpick it all so I actually ended up taking some fabric out of the zip which is fine but I think I would have preferred to take the fabric out of the darts because I think it would have given a more smooth look at the back but it's not particularly obvious or whatever, so it's fine. The other fit issue is actually one that I would like some advice on because I really don't know how to fix it. I'm not sure how obvious it will be right now, but the shoulders here stand away from my shoulders quite a bit by a good couple of centimetres. Essentially, I've got very flat horizontal shoulders and I think this um, would obviously fit someone with slightly more sh uh, sloping shoulders quite nicely. And my facing, so it's got like a, a piece of facing here, my facing is currently sitting beautifully. So I was kind of a bit too scared to try and mess with this too much, to try and like take it in, because I, I didn't know how to do it without messing up my facing. I obviously just need to take out a little bit of fabric here. Does anyone have any advice on the best way to tackle this? Because I really don't want to mess, mess it up, because it is, it is all nice and smooth and nice. Yeah, but I do kind of want to fix that because, yeah, it's just standing away from my shoulders a little bit too much. But, overall, I'm absolutely delighted with this dress. I'm so pleased with how it's turned out. I, um, yeah, I learned quite a few new things whilst making it. It was one of the more technical things I've made recently. It certainly isn't, it's not a really complicated dress or anything. It is simple, but I am learning a lot as I go through, and this was one that challenged me a little bit more than some of the other things I've made recently, so that was brilliant. I think it's going to be such a nice dress to wear in the summer. It'll, I think because of the colour it will probably be more of a summer dress for me, just because I think being so bright and light it won't be as good with like black tights and stuff in the winter, it'll probably be more of a summer dress, but I'm just, yeah, really excited to wear it. The sun has finally come out in London, so hopefully I'm going to get some weather to be able to wear it soon. Thanks ever so much for watching, please let me know if you have made the Megan dress, what you think, whether you, yeah, what you think of the pattern and everything, I would love to hear from you. Please do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and click subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos and I'll see you next time, bye!